once again, I welcome you once again to the second international conference of the Federal Protective Kilaru of State, Nigeria. The next on the agenda is uh, the speech, the welcome address by the conference chairman, engineer O.A. Oshuri. You have the floor, sir. The rector, principal officers of the Polytechnic, deans of school, directors of academic and service uh, units, heads of department, the keynote speaker, Professor Mrs. Mame Alpha Nkuma, Takura D. Technical University, formerly Takura D. Polytechnic, Takura D. Ghana, the lead people presenter, one, engineer Dr. Kamoru Oluwato Ikadri of the Federal Polytechnic of Akwara State, Nigeria. Presenter two, Professor Olani Same Okedele, University of Lagos, Lagos State, Nigeria. Invited guests, distinguished participants and audience globally online, members of the fourth estate of the realm, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is my play great pleasure to welcome you all to the second international conference, the Federal Polytechnic Ilaro Ogun State. The theme of this biennial conference is Imagine Trends in Tibet as a contributor to economic transformation for global competitiveness with objectives that focus attention globally on current issues in technical and vocational education and training, TVET. This international conference was initially planned to hold physically on the campus of the Federal Polytechnic Ilaro, Ogun State, Nigeria. However, with the outbreak of the ravaging COVID-19 pandemic and the need for the observance of COVID-19 safety protocols, in line with best practices, coupled with the desire to sustain the frequency of hosting the biennial conference despite all challenges. The organizing committee and the management of the Federal Polytechnic Ilaru opted for hosting of the conference. The keynote speaker and lead people invited from both within and outside the country. They are vast in main team and sub teams of the conference with immense wealth of experience and research exposure to share with scholars, researchers in the academia and uh, industry. The keynote speaker, Professor Mrs. Mame Alpha Nkrumah is currently the Dean of the International Programs and External Linkages Office of Takura the Technical University, formerly Takura the Polytechnic, Takura the Ghana. She holds a PhD and a master degree from the universities of Bristol, United Kingdom, and Twente, the Netherlands, respectively. She is a teacher by profession and has been into Tibet at the tertiary level since the year 2005. Engineer Dr. Kaboru Oluwato Inkadri, a lead paper presenter, is the director of Directorate of Affiliate Programs, the Federal Polytechnic of Aquara State, Nigeria. Dr. Kadri holds a master's degree in computer science, business administration, industrial and labor relations, PhD in networking and telecommunication. He is a fellow of the Nigerian Institution of Electrical and Electronics Engineers and the Nigerian Society of Engineers. He registered engineers with Korean. Dr. Kadri is an accomplished researcher that has published over 42 publications in top journals, author of seven books, holds two patents, and presented several papers at uh, conferences. Professor Oladi Isame Okede, also a lead paper presenter, is a professor of architecture and urban design, University of Lagos, Lagos, Nigeria. He from the Catholic University of America, 
Washington, D.C. with BSC, MARC, MARC, Urban Design. Its research interest includes theories in the design aspect of architecture and urban studies for sustainability. It has several articles published in peer-reviewed uh, national and international uh, journals. Professor Kedele is a fellow of the Nigeria Institute of Architects, fellow of the Society of Construction and Industrial Abrogators of Nigeria. Indeed, there is no doubt that this conference will provide an opportunity for academics and researchers in Tibet to present and discuss their work, exchange information on current best practices, and offer recommendations towards addressing some national and global issues of great concern or challenge in technical and vocational education and training. The conference has raised a great interest, judging by many inquiries received for participation. As at the time of going to the press, 236 full-length papers have been submitted, reviewed, and adjudged for presentation. This has given us good reasons to believe that this international forum will certainly provide the opportunity for the formulation of appropriate framework that will allow for the exploration and utilization of immense human and natural resources through technical and vocational education and training for global industrial development and growth. In line with the traditional structure of the biennial conference, the wealth of in-depth and broad information in technical and vocational education and training for industrial growth will be presented in plenary sessions to provide the basis for a dialogue between eminent and distinguished keynote speaker, the paper presenters and participants. The plenary sessions that have been arranged to fit into individual areas of interest and thus give and discussion among the participants. Due to time constraint, the technical sessions are to run in 10 parallel sessions. At this junction, let me see this opportunity to commend and appreciate the efforts of the director of this uh, institute, architect Olusegun Olarewaju Aluko, PhD, his management team, staff and students of this great citadel of learning for ensuring a conducive environment for learning, teaching, and research. It is on record that the Federal Polytechnic in Laro has been adjourned the best polytechnic in Nigeria, twice within a period of eight months. This latest was, the latest was the webometric ranking of tertiary institution uh, uh, worldwide, July 2020 edition, in which the institution was ranked the best polytechnic in Nigeria. The outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic in December 2019 has brought out the ingenuity and creativity in the faculty of the Polytechnic in the design and development of the following equipment aimed at either curtailing the spread of the pandemic or assisting in the treatment of patients. They are the mechanical ventilator, disinfectant boots, multiple outlets and washing machines, movable environmental sanitizer. Indeed, the Federal Polytechnic in Laro is setting, setting the pace for other polytechnics in Nigeria and a tertiary institution that has made its impact uh, globally. The ebook of conference proceedings and certificates of presentation for all full pay participants are available and can be downloaded from the conference uh, website. My thanks go to all individuals who had contributed in one way or the other to the making of the second international conference, the Federal Polytechnic Ilaro. In particular, I acknowledge and appreciate the contribution of members of the organizing committee, both individually and collectively, and the chairman of parallel technical session. I'm eternally grateful to all the faculty of this great institution for their unwavering support towards the hosting of the conference. The financial support from Lloydant Business Services Limited, Utaka District, Abuja, as a major stakeholder towards the hosting of the conference is acknowledged and immensely appreciated. We have great opportunities and challenges in technical and vocational education and training 
as a tool for economic transformation. And I believe that your contributions and recommendations in this conference will be an impetus for Tibet to be better positioned for a continued and sustainable economic development globally. globally. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is on this note that I welcome you once again to the second international conference, the Federal Polytechnic Ilaro Ogo State, Nigeria, and wish you a successful and impactful deliberation. Thank you all and remain blessed. Thank you for that wonderful uh, speech, Mr. Chairman, Engineer Owe Ushuri. Without much ado, the next on the agenda will be to read the citation of our keynote speaker. Uh, it's my singular honor to do that. Let me move to that point. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, conference participants, ladies and gentlemen, I have the singular honor and privilege to present the citation of a cerebral and international scholar of repute, researcher, personal, professional teacher, iconic educator, team player, mother, counselor, and administrator by excellence, Dr. Mrs. Mami Afua Nkrumah, assistant professor and dean in international programs and external linkages office, Takradi Technical University, Ghana. She is renowned expert in educational measurement, assessment and evaluation, gender issues and mainstreaming, internal and external quality assurance, Born in 1975, our keynote speaker is a consummate academic whose career path transvers both the administrative and academic cadres of technological education globally. Professor Kruma is happily married and blessed with children. Our keynote speaker left impeccable records of academic excellence in all educational institutions she attended and won several laurels for distinctions. After a successful primary education, Associate Professor Nkrumah attended Sema Junior Secondary School, Takurani, Ghana, between 1987 and 1990, and proceeded to PGR Secondary School, Secondi, Ghana for the senior secondary school education between 1990 and 1993. After she enrolled for three year post-secondary teacher certificate, grade A in Ola Training College, Cape Coast, Ghana, between 1996 and 1998. It was in this institution that Professor Groma carved a niche for herself and began to nurture in interest in teaching career. With a dint of hard work, she was admitted into the University of Cape Coast, Cape Coast, Ghana, for a bachelor's degree in science education in the year 2000, and completed the same in flying colors in 2004. Her passion for knowledge received a boost when she successfully pursued MSc degree in Educational Science and Technology with special focus on educational management, assessment and evaluation at the University of Twente, Netherlands between 2006 and 2007. She capped it all with a postgraduate certificate in research methodology and a PhD in education from the University of Bristol Bristol, United Kingdom, between 2010 and 2014. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, our keynote speaker has a rich resume in teaching profession, with cut across the administrative and academic cadre in the tertiary education system. From a humble beginning as an assistant superintendent of education in the Egyam Public Primary School, between 1998 and 2000, 
Professor Okuma destroy the academic landscape of the Republic of Ghana like a colossus as she held key appointments, positions with diverse responsibility, including head examination unit at Kurade University between 2007 and 2008, head quality assurance unit of the Polytechnic between 2008 and 2009. In 2009, ladies and gentlemen, the Polytechnic and identified the innate qualities in R and moved R from the administrative to the academic cadre. Consequently, she was appointed lecturer with responsibilities for teaching, research, and community service. In 2013, she was promoted to the position of senior lecturer. In September 2016, when the government of Ghana Convert said six polytechnic to technical universities. Professor Krumah's prowess began to uh, glare as she played a key role in the transition process of Takuradi Polytechnic to Takuradi Technical University. And a subsequent appointment into key positions in the university, including assistant professor and head library studies department, now Center for Languages and Liberal Studies, Takuradi Technical University between 2015 and 2017. Dean, International Programs and External Linkages, Broad Responsibility for Exploring and Concretizing both local and international linkages for the university. Relevant training. Between 2007 and 2018, our keynote speaker, benefited from a number of training programs that have positive impact on our productivity. Two of these are listed for once of time. Networking Forum. Networking Forum. And also, Professor Krumah's scholarly instincts are demonstrated by our attendance of high impact academic conferences in different countries of the world quality of papers she presented and top rates network of professionals, friendship and bilateral institutional agreements initiated with such event. The, the most interesting is the one she did at the Kappa conference when it was a case of building partnership for the promotion of TVET for innovation and entrepreneurship and youth empowerment in Africa. This was uh, in Rwanda between the 25th and 31st of August 2019. A closer look at the papers represented by this brilliant and sound daughter of Africa will reveal our irrevocable commitment and loyalty to Kappa programs by extension, technical education projects. No wonder she's one of the strong believers in the potency of technical education as a panacea to the merits of social, political, and economic challenges facing Africa as at now. She has published various articles despite the tight schedule, and she is a member of uh, various professional bodies. Among them, are Center for Multi-Level Building, University of Bristol, UK, Chemical Society of Ghana, Protective Teacher Association of Ghana, membership of uh, various university committees, and uh, among them is uh, the publication board, she's the chairperson of that committee, the library board of Takuradi Technical University, she's the chairperson, Library Board at Grand University, as well as a you know, lot of others. Similarly, Professor Okoroma's dexterity and commitment to duty has placed the responsibility of coordinating a number of university application projects on our shoulders. Various overseas links, she is a project member for the establishment of renewable energy 
education framework. Cross universities in Ghana. There is a gentleman, in particular, she is the project coordinator for the TTU for a number of bilateral relationships, few of which are cited below. Erasmus Mobility for Learners and Staff, Erasmus Mobility for Learners and Staff, the International Exchange Program between Institute of National Polytechnic, Felix Ophit Boni, Africa Coast, and Tokorade University, Ghana, a part time PhD program between Central University of Technology, South Africa, and Takuradi Technical University. A part-time PhD program between Lovely Professional University of Indiana and the Takuradi Technical University. Mr. Sherman, conference participants, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to invite the keynote speaker, Professor, Mrs. Mame Afua Nkrumah to make a We cannot it has changed. The skill and the knowledge required has changed. So what do we do? We need to up our game in line with that. The role of students and teachers have also changed. As we are doing now, we are projecting. In our classrooms, we can use video presentations, especially with the COVID. Some of us are recording our lectures and posting them on the net for students to benefit. We also do online teaching live or we can show students how to do something on the computer. So instead of the teacher always teaching on the board, he can decide that he will use computer. We'll show, I'll show you a next picture later, then I'll explain. Then there's also simulations. Those in engineering, in the past you build the, the house before you think of how things are fitting. But today you can simulate before you even build. So we need to also do that and then uh, the way we go about programs have also changed. Now we do, if you have, we give students assignments, they submit online, they do everything online. You don't need to be carrying paper from one place to another. These are changes. Let's look at the picture. So you see the teacher going around. Each student has a computer. And as he's doing the thing on his computer, the students also have the opportunity to practice same on their computer. So that by the time they leave the classroom, they have already learned the skill. Because we are used to theory, we teach, and people have not even seen a mouse before. So we need to do something that students can benefit by using ICT in our teaching. That is the trend these days. Then if you look at this uh, structure, I'm sure the engineers there will appreciate this better. This is a simulation as to how we build a house. If you live in an area where there are airplanes and others, you will need to check all these things to see if there will not be a crash as well as it because of the height of your building. So you do all these simulations before you start the actual building. And I'm sure when I finish, the engineers will tell us more. And there's intensified competition in the global market. We are all under pressure. We are told that the future of countries lie within the ability to compete in the global markets as they exchange goods, services, technology, and knowledge across international bodies. And we as institutions are also under pressure to make sure that our works are visible. Each year, students do project work, very good ideas. What do we do? We push them to the corner of the room and nobody sees it. We carry out a lot of uh, research. Some of us, if we don't publish in journals that are online, nobody sees the work that we are doing. And some of us have special abilities. What are we doing? These days, a lot of universities have very uh, extensive websites that carry information on each lecturer, where you can see their interest, whatever. And from my own experience, anytime somebody wants to collaborate with you, the first thing they do is they go online and look at your website, who are there, what are they doing? So we need to constantly update our website to show or showcase what we are doing so that uh, we can compete in the global market. Then, more than necessary, there's a need for us to partner industry. 
We can no longer be doing our own thing whilst industry does its own thing. So we need to work with industry in bridging the gap between what is needed at the workplace and what is actually produced by us. And we can do this by constantly updating our curricula and using the CB competency-based training approach where we do a lot of practical. The industry can also advise us as to what programs are necessary so that as soon as we produce the student, they can get employment and they can help us in acquiring equipment and technologies that are used in industry. And then cost effectiveness in terms of bringing them on board to teach. So if you have very good relationship with industry, we can bring them to come and share practical experience in our teaching. So once we have finished the theory part, we can bring these ones on board, to come and share their experience with us. And then we can also transfer uh, technology. Many of our companies are not using technical or uh, TVET institutions. When they have problems, we should have collaboration with them. Like that, they can come and say, we have this problem and we want you to help to solve so that we can use students and lecturers to do that and at the end of the day, uh, have the technology transferred to industry or they can transfer their technology to us. Then we all know our jobs, are, our graduates are always moving around with their files looking for jobs that are non-existent. So what is the way forward? The way forward is to look at entrepreneurship training. Uh, we have to make sure that our students can set up their own businesses after school, how much small it might be, so that they can be employed. Then we also want to encourage interdisciplinary technology integration, where in the project you have the marketers, the electrical engineers, the mechanical engineers coming together to work on a particular project, so that the electrician will look at the electrical aspects the mechanical engineer will look at, at the end of the day, we have something that is workable. And then the student will want to put them up in teams because we don't have money. If you go to borrow in the bank, you cannot pay the interest. So what do we do? We put four or five students together and they bring their resources together and they set up a small business so that they can uh, progress. And then it also calls for innovation and incubation centers. I don't know how many of us have it where students can nurture their ideas and make sure that they, uh, they actually survive. There are many experiences in Ghana of young people, some of them less than 25 years, having become CEOs because of these incubation centers. And then the moral training. Most of us have businesses that have collapsed. Why? Because we don't have the attitude of a businessman. This is my brother. This is my sister. So they come. They take things anyhow, uh, they spoil everything and they leave. And then very soon before you realize the business has collapsed. So in addition to giving them entrepreneurship training, we need to teach them morals, how they can get up. It's my own business, I can go at any time. So now 10 o'clock is not going to work. But if he has the morals, he will know that it's my own business. If he doesn't survive, I will not eat. So seven o'clock, he will be there. So we need all these moral trainings to help. And then we need to look at our grading system. Uh, it has been said over and over again. After this, we'll do the discussion. Uh, should we look at people based on the grades they have, or we should look at what they can do in technical education? Because some people have the skill, but they don't have the grades. What do we do? Are we throwing all these people away? Or we'll give them the opportunity to be able uh, to also come on board and then get others who have the English to support them. Let us look at that later in our discussion. So this is a picture of somebody who has set up a small business after fashion training, and I'm sure he will eat every day. And then this is a picture showing three engineers, maybe mechanical, electrical, or civil, coming together to solve a problem. And this is a group of students who have come together to work so that they can all end something. So we are encouraging that we put our students together when we have projects and we have monetary issues. Let us put them together so that they can work and at the end of the day they will all be employed. Now we come to how TVETs contribute to economic transformation. If we invest in our workforce development and adopt environmentally friendly technologies 
it will benefit us a lot because the current global market requires the use of skilled workforce and emerging technologies that transform traditional agricultural systems to more sophisticated industrialized systems. So we cannot continue to just be exporting. So a number of studies have shown that CVET has a strong impact on economic transformation. For example, many countries that have been successful today have been so because of uh, connecting TVET with national and economic uh, development plans and policies. So as TVET in institutions, we have a function to train and absorb a sizable number of people that will add value to agricultural products and reduce poverty. So in what way? Uh, one way is to transform primary based uh, product to, to transform from primary based economy to industry based economy. We also have to adopt new technologies that are environmentally friendly and we need to improve the living standards of our people. We are going to look at how we do that. The first point is to look at our skilled workforce. So we need to make machinery as TV institutions that will move agriculture from low productivity to high value crop or a highly treated product that can be exported. Instead of always exporting primary products, we want to look at it before. So we have a way to look at a developing machinery. We'll look at pictures later. Then we want to look at, if we are extracting anything from the environment, we want to make sure that it is friendly. It is something that is not going to harm the environment. And then we want to move from using many people to do small work to making sure that we are using technology in order to reduce the number of people who work on in these areas. So let's look at this picture. Somebody is preparing palm oil, we all know. Can you imagine the oil that you lose to the environment and how even safe the oil is? If as technical investors we want to address this, what should we do? Next picture. Can we develop something like this, as simple as it looks with engineers, electrical, mechanical, so that our mothers, our sisters who are standing in the pit can still get their oil in a good way. When it comes to agriculture, look at these uh, women, the dust, they are plowing. Look at the dust going into their nose. Look at what is happening elsewhere. Can we develop something like this so that uh, we can be more effective, use less people, make sure our people are healthy and also accomplish much uh, within the shortest possible. I don't think these are too difficult for us to do as TVET institutions. If we bring our engineers together and our marketers, we'll be able to do this. Then we look at the service sector. This sector deals with services to consumers, which include uh, retail, tourism, banking, entertainment, and IT services. What do we do? Whereas somebody who is all skilled would uh, hawk in the sun, a skilled person will use internet and other apps to sell items. And then if you want to sell our website, a tourism sites, hotels, banking, we can go online. And so, Technology plays a major role in quality of work and the time of the amount of time that is used in working, as well as how satisfied we look like. Let's look at the picture. We all eat this fish. Somebody will carry it on his head the whole day. Can you imagine the effects of the heat on the fish? But if we use technology, we can as well uh, make money. Today, there are people that if you're a busy person, you cannot go to the market. They advertise, they can go and shop for you and bring it to your house for a charge. This is a service. So we can do some of these things so that uh, we can get more satisfaction from our work. Yes. Okay, so in terms of social uh, development, let's see how TVS can help us. It can reduce crime rates as the youth have something to do. They are not idling. It can increase employment and it can reduce poverty rates. We also shift from uh, 
uh, always exporting primary materials to exporting semi finished and completely finished products for foreign exchange. And definitely, economic uh, development of goods will follow. We also need to reduce the importation of certain goods. I know that in Africa, even toothpick, we import matches, we import. Is it possible for us to look at some of these things as in technical institutions and go commercial? We need to increase quality and quantity in productivity, leading to increased uh, GDP. And then we also need to we also increase community-sponsored projects as individuals who have the means to contribute to such projects. So when people are working and we want to do something in the community because they have money, they can also contribute. So we create employment and we can all improve the standard of living that we have. So what are the recommendations? Uh, the recommendations are that government should make TV teaching both attractive and well respected. And apart from the government, individually, we also have that responsibility of making sure that we respect those who are in Tibet. We also need to strengthen the bond between teachers, trainers, and professional associations. And the essence of this is to make sure that standards are met and the right things are taught. Then we need to properly organize Tibet to avoid duplication. So if one technical institute or institution can specialize in one particular area, and do well, it is better than trying to do everything and not doing it well. So we need to look at how we can organize it to make sure that this university or this technical institute is known for this, that is better. And then we need to develop the pedagogy of uh, technical and practical skills of those who are into Tibet, the teachers, the students, everybody who is involved in Tibet, they need to have the skill for them to be able to impact. And then the COVID has taught all of us a lesson that without ICT, we cannot survive. So we need to improve ICT infrastructure and then establish links between colleagues and industry. I think I've emphasized this already. Let us partner ourselves so that we can learn best practices and share best experiences. We also need to streamline the link between former and informal TVET. So it looks like those in the formal sector are doing their own thing, and those in the formal sector are also doing their own thing. But you'll be amazed at some of the things that those in the informal sector can do. All they need is some small polishing. So if we can develop a, a framework that will bring these ones on board into our system so that we can train them and learn their ideas. I think in Ghana, we have what we call the qualification framework. And that allows people to enter at various level and then streamline their education. So I recommend, I think South Africa also has that. And then we want to promote quality, efficiency, and standards instead of expansion. And then keep proper records on TVET and research into it. So I don't know whether there are proper records on TVET as in other sectors of education. So let us do that and also create and develop technologies in line with global demands. So we don't just want to be supervising students in doing projects. We want to make sure that the project that we are supervising are things that can be used. For example, in our university, sometimes some offices may, be, may ask for certain equipment and then the students will do it as their project work. So that as soon as it is done, it can be used. So if there are farm associations, we can do certain projects for them so that they can do their work better. And as for uh, entrepreneurship training, I don't know whether there's a better word than uh, overemphasize. If we don't do that, our people will finish school and they will be without jobs. So we need to overemphasize entrepreneurship training. So in conclusion, I would say that this conference should be seen as a stepping stone for instigating a complete restructuring of TVET in Nigeria and Africa in order to have the full benefit. We must all tighten our belts and work to achieve a better reform TVET, for we owe it a duty to give to the future generation countries that, can, that we can all be proud of. Thank you.
minimum. And, Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that brilliant, brilliant, brilliant uh, presentation. Uh, Professor Mami Afan Kruma. It was a very brilliant presentation. And um, uh, wherever you are in the world, I urge you to give uh, this brilliant speaker a standing ovation as she has done marvelously in the presentation. She has uh, uh, succinctly and thoroughly uh, delve into our theme, emerging trends in Tibet, as a contributor to economic transformation for global competitiveness. Uh, looking at uh, that presentation was a very, very brilliant one. However, we would want to take all questions at the same time. So, uh, upon listening to other presenters, we'll take the questions together. And at this point, we'd want to uh, get uh, the second presenter ready. We'll get the second presenter ready, and uh, we'll take the citation first, and then it's a presentation. The present citation speak taker, speaker should do so. Let's take the citation of engineer Kamoru Kaderi, PhD. Engineer Kamoru Kaderi, PhD. Let's take his citation now. I'm clicking. Yes, Barista Gulan Dadu. Barista Gulan Dadu, this is a Pian Electricity so we can uh, identify from here so as to make you enable you to read the citation. Barista Gulan Dadu, or meet yourself and raise up your hand so we can identify you and then allow you to read the citation. Barista Gulan Dadu.
This is uh, the second international conference, the virtual one, of the Federal Technical Laro, Augustus. Okay, I've been corrected. This citation is to be read by Engineer Aikulola. It's to be read by Engineer Aikulola. Engineer Aikulola, please signify. enable you from here, and then your present your original citation. Engineer Olumiwa Aikulola, you have been omitted. Kindly read the citation now. Engineer Aikulola, you have been omitted. Read the citation now. Engineer Aikulola, you have been omitted. Read the citation now. You need to omit yourself. You need to omit yourself so we can hear you. You need to omit yourself so we can hear you. Okay, Engineer Aikulola. All right, thank you. The chairman, can you hear me? Hello, sir. We can Am hear you. You are on. Okay. Thank you very much. Distinguished uh, chairman of the conference, rector, and uh, other participants. Um, I am honored, singularly, to present the citation of uh, Kadri Kamoru Oluato in PhD, a lead principal presenter at the second international conference, the Federal Polytechnic Ilaru in Ogun State. Kadri Kamoru Oluato in PhD, FNSC, FIDPM, FNIEE, was born October the, I mean on August the eighth. 1968 in Oshobo State. As a young man, his education journey started from Ansaruddin Primary School, Isale Oshun in Oshobo, which he completed in 1979. He then proceeded to St. Charles Grammar School, Oshobo, for his secondary education and obtained the West African Examination Certificate, WIAC, in 1986. His quest for further knowledge made him proceed for higher education at the Polytechnic Ibadan in Ohio State, where he obtained a national diploma in electrical and electronic engineering in 1988. He then went on to Obafemi University, Obafemi Aulo University, Ileife in Oshu State, where he obtained the BSc in electrical electronics in 1995. Unsatisfied, he proceeded to the University of Aduikiti in Ikiti State for a Master of Business Administration in the year 2000. Furthermore, he went on to the University of Ilorin for another master's degree in Industrial and Labor Relations in 2007. Namdi Azikiwe University, Oka, Anambra State for a postgraduate diploma in Computer Science in the year 2002. Babcock University in Lishan Remogu State for yet another master's in computer science in the year 2012, before crowning it at the Babcock University in Lishan Remogu State with a PhD in computer science in 2016. His competence and diligence earned him three awards for sustaining hitherto abandoned equipment. For this feat, he obtained a letter of commendation on reactivation of abandoned equipment worth several millions of naira in the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, with yet another letter of appreciation of the Polytechnic Management Team on the repairs and maintenance of equipment and instrument in measurement and instrumentation laboratory of the Department of Science Laboratory at the Federal Polytechnic Offer in Kwara State. 
These achievements culminated in his attracting a bench work warrant, I mean grant, of 13 million 409,000 Naira only from the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, TED Fund, in Nigeria in 2015. Kamoru Luatoi, PhD, joined the Federal Polytechnic offer and as, a, as an assistant lecturer in 1996 and rose to the enviable position of chief lecturer by 2016 in a space of 20 years through the dint of hard work. A one time dean, School of Engineering at the Living Spring College of Technology as a part-time, one-time head of department, Electrical Electronics Engineering, the Federal Polytechnic offer. He is a registered fellow, Nigerian Society of Engineers, a fellow, Nigerian Institution of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, a fellow, Institute of Data Processing Management of Nigeria. He has been involved in consultancy practices project design and supervision. He served as external examiner and part-time lecturer to some polytechnics. And he also served as a resource person for accreditation exercises to the National Board for Technical Education, MBT. Kadiri Kamoru Luatoi, PhD, an eminent scholar and an avid publisher in Impact Scholarly Journals has authored many books, which include Introduction to Circuit Theory, A Practical Approach, which he published in 2016. Architecture of Computer Hardware and Software, also in 2016. Fundamentals of Communication Engineering, also in 2016. And an Introduction to Computer Networking in 2012, to mention some. He equally has 27 journal publications to his credit, of which he is the lead author in 18 of them. Amongst them are Kadri Odmola AM and Ala BOA in 2015, the title of which was Ways of Achieving Stable and Uninterrupted Power Supply of Electricity in Nigeria, published in the British Journal of Applied Science and Technology. Kadri KO BME, SB and Ala AO, also published in 2015, titled A Modified Optimal electricity distribution algorithm for Nigeria machine tools distribution zone. Also published in the British Journal of Applied Science and Technology to mention a few. Also, he has 12 papers that have been accepted for publication, 17 published referred conference proceedings, and six seminar presentations. Kadiri Kamoru Oluato in PG was at a time between 2009 and 2013, the chairman Academic Star Union of Polytechnics of the Federal Polytechnic Offer. Also, one time secretary, Academic Star Union of Polytechnics, Southwest Zone C, between 2009 and 2011. And the Public Relations Officer, also of ASOP, Southwest Zone C, from 2011 to 2013. Notable professionally accomplished and commissioned projects by Kadri Kamoru Oluwatun PhD include. One, the installation of 33 HV slash 11 KV transformer at Otta Ayegbaju in Osun State, worth 10 million naira. The diversification of 33 KV lines at the Federal Polytechnic Staff Secondary School in Offa, worth about 4 million naira. Also, the design and construction of the new generator house at the Federal Polytechnic offer. What about 2.5 million? And finally, amongst so many, installation of 11 KV transformers at the Federal Polytechnic offer. What 17.5 million naira? Kamoru Oluwato in PhD has his innovative progress. Patents on custom verification through finger vein pattern based machine matching support vector machine and the design and implementation of face recognition system using the MATLAB framework. Please permit me to present to you Kadri Kamoru Oluwatoi PhD, FNSE, FIDPM, FNIE, the current director, Directorate of Affiliate Programs, the Federal Polytechnic Offer, Kwara State in Nigeria. Thank you.
Thank you for that uh, wonderful citation read by Engineer Olumiwa Ikulola. Dr. Kadir Issa. Dr. Kadir Issa. It's time for your presentation. The slide, the slide. The slide, the slide. He's asking for the slide. Eric. The slide is coming up. Can you project from here, Dr. Baku? Yes, I we can hear you. Okay. Yes, you can. Yes, you can project from there if you choose if you want to. You can project from your end, sir. I should project on. Uh, as we await uh, the presentation, I want to quickly inform that uh, you can send in your questions via the chat and do so we can um, uh, note them and yeah. then uh, uh, pass them to the speakers. Type in and send your question via the chat and do, and then we can uh, handle all the questions. Thank you for that. I look forward to a presentation in 25 minutes, sir. For want of time, I'm standing on the system protocol. I pick one greetings from the management and uh, the other staff of Federal Tech Corp into this uh, conference. I have two slides to present in this conference. Globally, the primary objective of technical and vocational education and uh, training is to equip people with technical and professional skills needed for socioeconomic and industrial development of the country. And the primary objective is on training of people for self-employment and sustainability. The purpose of this paper is to provide some analytical overview of emerging trends in TFET as a contributor to economic transformation of global competitors in Nigeria and Africa as a region. And to solve challenges of educational trends, economic transformation, and skill trainings, and suggest some measures to stimulate debate, in the Nigerian Transformation Forum, under the auspices of 
the African Center for Economic Transformation. The new drivers and changing in TFET's global perspective trends are adopted in this research. Therefore, this paper is divided into six sections. An overview of trends on democratic change in Nigeria is highlighted in section one. While in section two, the economic globalization trends was also mentioned. The third section illustrates an overview of internet every, everywhere as a trading demand and supply for skills development and critical gap while the fourth section is on cross disciplinary technology integration trends. The fifth section has to do on environmental trends as a skill potential. The last section has to do with the recommendation. In summary, the paper focuses on the key issues and challenges for skill development and suggest the effect as alternative to bring the industrial revolution for a, an economic sustainability. Next slide. 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 Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. Next slide. That's the next slide, yes, yes. No, that's not the next slide. Are you projecting from there? No, it's projecting for you. No, no, no. That's not the next slide. No, no, no. For this one. Thank you. That's the next slide. Yes, correct. Thank you. 60 years ago, more than 19 African countries got their independence. Nigeria was one of them. With large economy in the early 60s in the whole Africa then. With total estimated human population of 200 and 200 million. With a real GDP growth of 0.8% according to Central Intelligence Agency 2018. Comparing the African country who gained independence in the early 60s, Nigeria is six times lower in terms of GDP growth rate in Africa. Swaziland, yes, that's it. Swaziland got independence in 1968 
That was eight years before Nigeria. And it had fat value. <coughs> the per capita income done history. Currently, the national output of Swaziland is almost twice other than that of the Nigeria. According to the World Bank 2011, in a nutshell, the set of other development does not lie only in lack of capital. But more importantly, lack of adequate knowledge, lack of technical know-how, lack of skills to enhance productivity and to increase national output. The next slide, please. Yes, next slide. The next slide. The history of TFED in relation to economic trends. The African economy remained largely informal, with estimation of about 65% of unemployment found in the informal sector. As a result of activities in the agricultural production, which varies, actually, quarry, mining, small scale businesses, construction and machine shop manufacturing. If you look at that table two, you are going to see the economic indicator. Deviation rate from 2015 to first quarter in 2019. Go back to the slide. Go back to that slide. Thank you. If you look at the indicator from 2015 to 2019, the rate of employment. Go back to the slide, please. Thank you. The employed person in thousand. Who is this? Can we put it here? Okay. You're not protected. You're not protected. No, it's okay. Here. The employment person in thousands. You can see the rate at which Thank you, the employment rate. Hello, sir. In Hello, sir. Please yes. can you share can you share your screen from your end? So that Please, can we share it? Can you share from your end? I will stop from here so that I can share. Thank you, sir. Okay, the answer is to share. Yes. Please, let's, let, let's forget from here, please. We can share, please. These are screen now, if they accept. Mm -hmm. So we're not sharing our okay. The employment passes in thousands starting with 2015 to 2019. The average in 2000, from 2015 to 2018 is average at 85.242%. And the population and all time excess of 93.62% in the first quarter of 2015. And a documented low of 76%. 
In the third quarter of 2018, I show you that table. Next slide. The business confidence in Nigeria and Africa it decreases to 6.06% in March from 26.60 points in February of 2020, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. The account of globalization is another clear trend. The capital, talent, and money continue to flow around the world faster and faster. And the influence of multinational organization and multinational companies also continue to increase. If you look at that graphical illustration, you will see that the influence of the multinational organization and the international organization coming to the African as a sort of <coughs> the mineral resources they found in Nigeria is at a documented low of 76.42%. So therefore, the business confidence started to decrease to 6.6 is zero point in March from 26 points in February of 2020. 2020. In 2000, in 2017, in 2020, we can see the rate at which the business coming to the African and Nigeria, most especially, continue to increase and decrease. But at, at January 2020, before the advent of uh, COVID 19, <coughs> we are able to see that. It has a higher percentage than the previous years highlighted on the screen. The TBB breakdown analysis from 2017 to first quarter in 2020 is what we have in the next slide. And as you can see, that the GDP rate. <coughs> of the African countries as shown in slide two and three, the African regions cannot be compared with what we have when we have the TFED with in those countries that really believe that the objectives of the TFA is on training for self-employment and sustainability compared to what we have in the African video here. In the first quarter in 2020, you can see the GDP from services, from the transport, from the utilities. It's is becoming an alarm rate at that particular time. Most people, they believe that when they leave for Guinea Pacho in another country, yes, they have job security there. The effect of And in the first quarter of in 2020, the African countries not, <coughs> we cannot. Believe that we are not 
serious with the services they were rendered in this country. So therefore, the aging migration causes change in increase in the labor force. Increase in population structure, increase in average in life span, declining birth rate, creates changing in the labor force, which brings about the greater disparity between the urban population and rural population, according to the International Labor Force of 2000. The second section has to do with internet everywhere. Internet has connected the whole world as a global village. We are sitting at our comfort zone to attend this conference because of internet activities. There are new business models on the internet. You don't have to know the shop before you can get your business to your customer, before you, can, before you can sell your goods and services, before you can render services. Yes, I agree. There are negative impacts of internet. Yahoo plus Yahoo. We know that. But when you consider the internet impact, compared to the negative impact of the internet, you will know that the internet brings about the supply of demand and demand and fill up the gaps. The norms is that there are associated similes that you can find in the internet for you to communicate easily nowadays. If we are communicating on the internet, there are ways and manners that when you communicate in it on the internet, the two parties, the receiving end, Sixty-five percent of Africans do not have access to the internet. But before the advent of internet, are we not really communicating? Are we not communicating? But with the technical and professional education and training nowadays, it has brought so many activities online, which is factual. As a result of the internet activities, federal political government made a target strike in the production of ventilator. And the whole world, the whole world got to know about the innovation of the federal protecting law. And the rate and manner that the internet projected the image of federal protecting law made it to be a new business model for the potential sector in Nigeria. And Federal Protection Laro has now become a reference point in the annual history of the potential sector in Nigeria. The GDP for agriculture in Nigeria and Africa, it has decreased in millions. From in the first quarter of 2019, we are having 5.093 million naira in the first quarter of 2019. And in the third quarter of 2019, again, you have seen that we have 5.4 billion naira in the third quarter of 2019. And between 2019 and 2020,
of the agricultural production that has taken place at that particular time, according to Nigeria Bureau of Tax Nigeria. For the chief health educator, as we all know, this paper highlighted the future roadmap. This has to do with capacity building programs for chief health educators as we are. One, there should be curriculum based aquatic training. Unlike what we have now, that some people will just come around to give us curriculum. The curriculum has to be faculty based on the available equipment in the laboratories. Gone are those days when you are going to conduct an IV programmatical. But if, if you are a chief educator, there is need for you to organize a curriculum based on the number of the based on availability of equipment, the training you have had. Yes, in your laboratories. ICT, Information Communication and Technology. We were given laptops, but some of us, they fail to realize that if you have the laptop, it's for a skill enhancement. There is need for chief educator to know that if you have IC technology, you are also contributing to the development of the sector. Pedagogical training, also very, very important. And in the summer programs, we find out that most of our public institutions, they close down the holiday without allowing the students and the staff to go on summer programs. Therefore, there's need for old paradigms and new paradigms to be identified. In the olden days, this land. what we have is supply driven approach in the old paradigm. But in the paradigm, we have to have the man driving approach. And I will use for example, take Adobe, for example. In the COVID 19 era, it is on record that Ante Aluko and his team. Made a giant strike to have mechanical ventilator, but who are they partnering with? Or who are we partnering with in the potential sector? When you talk of supply, there must be a demand driven approach to make sure that the efforts of the managers are not just wasted. In the world arrangement, we have training for employment. Nowadays, it's learning for employment. The key North Africa has projected three slides for us to see on partnership, but not training for employment nowadays, not paper qualifications as we are operating in Africa now, is what we can offer, what we can give out. When you have your certificate, you should be able to lay your hands to produce and item for public consumption. In service training is what we have in the old for like old sheet, but in this sheet, you have to have self-learning. Yes. Concept of continuing lifelong learning. You don't have to assume that you are a specialist in just one area. There's need for you to seek for more knowledge, for you to be self-dependent, and to, for you to contribute to the economic development of your country. Training focus on the teacher's trainer. That is what we have in the road arrangement. But in now the new sheet, there is need for self learning. Irrespective of your status in the society, 
You must be able to have a focus. You must be focused in such a way that in the area that you specialize on, there is need for you to be master of knowledge there, for you to contribute to the society. In the old seat, you specialize in net telecommunication, one skill. But now, it has to do with multi skilling. You don't have to wait that because I'm a specialist in networking, I read men. When you are good in one area, you see for knowledge in another area. I want to use the this botanic lab, the botanic lab as an example. After the invention of the machine ventilator, yes, the botanic the botanic lab has done for the patenting of that equipment. But what we need is skill recognition on the training period for people that will come after when the chief executive here, when it's no more on the set. There should be flexible multiple entry and flexible multiple exit. Don't have to. Bring out a policy or consider a policy, and the policy you are talking about must be delivery and must be timely and must be market driving and must be participatory. Yes, as we have seen today, you can see now that the governance domiciled by whosoever. But nowadays, what we have now is participatory governance that you have to recognize all the critical stakeholders, all the users for social dialogue. That's the central role in the TFL to meet the need of emerging industry in Nigeria nowadays and Africa. Imagine trends in Africa and the Pacific region. The TFL trend and specific skills intervention, knowledge based economy. Strategies are introduced to advocate critical thinking. Rapid technological change. Possession of generation, generic skill, soft skill has become a prerequisite in the new world place. Global warming. Three minutes left. Sustainable and development as key agenda Three minutes. of the United Nations and development organization. They are also required. And poverty elevation. Entrepreneurship. Modular employable skills and information sector skills are largely considered to advance poverty reduction mechanism. In 1971, the federal government of Nigeria established industrial training firms. The question is, are they partnering with the industry for 21st century skills to expand access to quality technical education and develop workshop competencies as required in both rate areas? Nigeria Financial Freedom Score is 52.2 points, making its financial system the 160 years inside the 2020 index. Its basic score has decreased by way of 0.1 pounds, reflecting a decline in the economic fitness score. 
Nigeria, the African region, is ranked 14 among 47 nations inside this sub Saharan African area. And its standard rate is slightly above the nearby common and went under the arena. Under the arena. The industrial trading firm should partner for 21st century skills to expand access to quality, technical, vocational, and develop workforce competencies. Expand access to quality, technical, vocational, and implementation scholarship for employment training program. There's need for expansion of access to quality technical vocational. People that are on scholarship, they are on scholarship, there should be a training program for them. Most of the industry in Africa have collapsed as a result of the infrastructure deficit in the African region. There's need for provision for financial assistance to trainees and the full implementation and integration of skills development program all that grassroots project budgeting in africa what is the UNESCO standard for education we are all aware the budget provision for education in africa more than in nigeria there is a percentage that UNESCO recommended and the budget provisions for education but what we have nowadays is just an nice one there's need for implement programs to meet competence required in key growth area. All, all stakeholders will engage in constant institutional based training program that will lead to key employment generation generator and develop work for in the early, nowadays. You don't have to get your PhD and remain stagnant. There's need for you to also partner for you to be able to do what to contribute to the nation. And that is the essence of the TFED, and that's how it should be. Most of the time, the sector, we should be, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't compete favorably at all with our investment counterparts. Yes, the mandate is clear. The mandate are not not say what the potential sector is meant for is technical, technology. Man, no, no, sir. Above are the references that were used in my paper. I want to thank the chairman for the opportunity given to me to be one of the lead paper presenters. Thanks for listening and happy deliberations. Thank you. A round of applause for wherever you are in the world listening to him. A round of applause. Thank you for that uh, brilliant effort. Really appreciate that. Uh, let's quickly move to uh, the next uh, lead paper presentation uh, to be presented by Professor Olani Okidele. But before that, uh, the citation will have to be read. And the citation will be read by no other person, but, but another barista. Barista of Mogbola or Akim is the turn to read the citation of Professor Olani Okidele. More questions uh, uh, should be sent in. We have reacted through via chat to state that, and I'm using this opportunity to also restate it. Um, after the three presentations, we'll be uh, responding to all the questions. But you can keep sending your questions. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, the chairman of this occasion, the director of federal protection in the Laro, architect Ulusha Gwaluku, PhD. In conformity with the dictates of Pontilio at events such as this, permit me to stand on the executive protocols of the day as earlier rendered. My words here today in delivering this citation are not intended to be tombstones, but simply the amount of teaching and to be given to intellectual conquests, both in seeking knowledge. Born in Oyo, present day Oyo State, he went through the mandatory pre tertiary education sojourn before attending the Catholic University of America, Washington, D.C. 
United States of America, where he bagged both his bachelor's honors and master's professional degrees in architecture. His determined will saw him go back to his alma mater to back a second master's degree in architecture, this time around specializing in urban design. He had his industrial training at Austin Peaks Associates in Washington, D.C., a firm of architects, and had his research experience with the National Center for Resource Recovery, the United States Federal Agency, still in Washington. He later moved to Maryland, where he worked as a project architect with Diversified Engineering Incorporated, all in the United States. Home repeatedly came calling, and in 1982, he returned to Nigeria to join the academic staff to establish the architecture program at the University of Ibadan. He was a lecturer grade one with the University of Ibadan from 1982 through 1987, specializing in general architecture, urban design, and landscape design. In 1987, he moved to the University of Lagos, where he was a lecturer from 1987 through 1990, senior lecturer from 1990 through 2002, and became a full professor of architecture in 2002. At this time, he had expanded his scope to become a thesis coordinator at the Department of Architecture. Having a firm focus on the methods and process of structuring or restructuring buildings and public spaces in cities with specific focus on their sustainability in its, that is the city's developmental growth. His inaugural lecture delivered on the 23rd August 2008 was titled Sustainability of Nigerian Built Environment in Nexus of Architecture, Urban Design and the National Building Code. In this regard, his work so far has been classified into three aspects. Design aspects of urban studies, building construction, strategies of reducing costs and theory in the design of architecture and city studies for sustainability. He has been at various times both a thesis supervisor and coordinator. He has contributed greatly in the design and supervision of various projects both within and outside the university community. He supervised the construction and innovation of Unilax Sports Center in 1996 through 1998. He designed and constructed the present location of Unilax School of Postgraduate Studies in 1997 and is currently the project architect of the ongoing construction of faculty of environmental sciences complex. He is currently leading a group of designers in the design of the School of Postgraduate Studies and Human Resources Development Board builders, all in the University of Lagos, who was part of a group of indigenous professionals that produced a master plan for Ogun State University, Agoyewe, the E for Taluka Government Master Plan, Amusement and Recreation Park for Abekuta local government, all in Ogun State between 1983 and 1992. He later led another group of indigenous professionals to produce a master plan for the University of Uyo, Akwai Bomb State, between 1993 and 1995. He was a project manager to Unilag Consult on Bureau of Public Enterprises, projects on redevelopment of the Lagos International Trade Fair complex and the National Arts Theatre in Lagos. He designed and constructed for Mobile Unlimited community development projects at their headquarters in Lagos between 1997 and 2002. He supervised the construction of the Yaba Baptist Church New Main Auditorium in Lagos. He designed and supervised various other private and public residential and commercial buildings in and outside the Lagos environment. Prof, as we are wont to call him, became a full member of the American Body of Urban Designers in 1981 after passing the qualifying exams in flying college. He became a full member of the Architects Registration Council of Nigeria in 1989. He became a full member of the Association of Architectural Educators of Nigeria in 1992. In 2007, he became a fellow of the Society of Construction Industry Administrators. And in 2013, he became a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Architects. He has, in his sojourn in academics, served in various university administrative capacities. Dean, College of Environmental Sciences and Management at the Caleb University in Mota, 2011 to 2014. Dean, Faculty of Environmental Sciences, University of Lagos, 2009 to 2011. Two-time head of Department of Architecture, 1992 through 1995 and 2004 through 2008. Chairman and sub-dean, Faculty Exams and Timetable Committee. Coordinator, stroke chairman, professional postgraduate programs. Chairman, diploma two students, examination malpractice. Member, university students, disciplinary committee. Member, university students, disciplinary board. Chairman Development Committee on Built of Unilag Property Management Board. Chairman Unilag School of 
with Graduate Studies New Administrative Building Committee. Still at the University of Lagos, he has rendered commendable service as hearing underlisted. He has been a member of the University of Lagos Housing Committee. He has been a member of the University of Lagos Committee on Electricity Consumption. He has been a member of the Lagos Front Rehabilitation Committee. Member University of Lagos Home Ownership Committee, member Unilag Council Management Board, member Unilag Staff Home Ownership Committee, member Space Unitarian and Work Services Complex Committee, Secretary and member Professional Fee Competition Committee, member University of Lagos Board of School of Postgraduate Studies, member Senate University of Lagos, and so many others. This man has also served the community in the following in the following capacity. As we know, a member editorial board of Nigeria Building and Road Research Institute. He has been a member editorial board of the Journal of Tropical Agriculture. He has been a member committee to review land development regulations for your state. He has been a member board of governors global grammar school, among so many others. He is a Rotarian and has served as a director of community service at the Rotary Club for the day. Quite commendably, but not unusual to those that know him, he has also rendered laudable service as a Christian to the church, that is specifically the Yaba Baptist Church. He has been a Bible study Sunday school teacher since 1988 till date. He has been director of church training program. He has been a two time superintendent of the Sunday school department. He is the first layman writer for the Nigerian Baptist Convention Education Development Board. Mr. Chairman, distinguished guest, the man is simply who he is. Here is a glaring evidence of an erudite scholar and accomplished being, an academic whose emulative qualities are a pride to all that he has mentioned. He is an engaged in academia, a worthy inspiration for greater height. With a mien as mellow, as graceful as a signet, Prof is imbued divinely with a highly cerebral and deeply intellectual mind. He is not one to revel in title and praise singing. It is also said of him that he abhors vainglorious outpourings. At this juncture, I have said my little bit about him. Let me invite all present to discover his deep, inspiring, educative, and impacting thoughts as I call on the lead paper presenter, the subject of this rendition, Professor Olani Samuel Okedile to present his paper. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. You're welcome. Kindly share your slides from your end, sir. Prof, sir, kindly share your slides from your end. And uh, I get it within five minutes of time. In five minutes, sir. Omit yourself, sir. Prof. Olani, omit yourself, sir. Already. Okay. Share your slides from your end, sir. Share your slides from your hand. Unmute yourself again. Okay. All right. Are we on? Yes, we are on. Share oh. your slides, sir. Oh. I thought you have a copy with you there. Yeah. You can share from here. Okay. You are sharing from here. Okay. Thank you. Can I go on? Go on, sir. All right. The rector, all principal officers of the institution, the deans of the faculties, and the HODs, all academics and non academic staff, all other colleagues of from um, presentation of papers, ladies and gentlemen, I want to stand on the existing protocol that has been established. This is the second lead paper, you know, of the second international conference of the federal um, political, uh, federal um, Polytechnic Laro. The first leader paper present, uh, presenters uh, method of presentation is more of statistics 
and my own will complement his own, you know, so that you can see the PowerPoints of the summary, you know, of um, what I am about to give on the theme. The theme, as I've been established, is the emerging trends in TVET as contributor to economic transformation for global competitiveness. And I have my paper uh, summarized on these um, themes. The introduction to the conference theme, the conference theme, some terminologies. And I want to look at the difference between the technical and vocational skill of education. Then I want to look at the importance of um, TVET, then the challenges of TVET, especially in Nigeria, and the latter part of the theme, which is uh, the economic transformation for global competitiveness. Then I want to look at a case study that shows you know, what the theme is all about, my recommendation and the conclusion. And I will end up, I mean, end up you know, my presentation. So I want to start you know, from the introduction to the conference um, theme. Slide, two, uh, slide one shows you know, the title. Slide two shows the introduction you know, to the conference theme. Now, the technical and vocational education and training, TVET, can be traced to April 1980 when the president of Nigeria gave a directive that all polytechnic and colleges of um, technology should revert to two-tier system technical education, which should lead to the award of national diploma, which is called ND, and higher national diploma, which is HND. This new curriculum was structured in unit course system in line with the provisions of the National Policy on Education, MPE, which makes it mandatory for all institutions to introduce the credit unit system that allows for the transfer of courses completed in, allows for the transfer of courses, sorry, completed in one institution to another similar or higher institution. The Council of Heads of Technological Institutions that is co-heads, initiated the drafts in conjunction with the contributions to the new curriculum from the academic professional associations and professional bodies. While the ND program is aimed to producing technicians for the various professions, HND program aim to produce higher technicians, you know, or technicians with the same professions. Developing relevant term skill for economic transformation for global competitiveness is a key challenge facing many countries, including Nigeria. The theme of the technical and vocational education tra training, which is TVET, for meeting national economic objectives very, very timely. Now, especially during the worldwide pandemic experience, the focus of the knowledge sharing events on this second international conference team is expected to come up with solutions or way forward at the end of the conference. Uh, the next something is to look at some technological, I mean, some uh, terminologies in the conference team. When we talk of TIFE, what is TIFE? By definition, Wikipedia definition and the UNESCO you know, um, definition. It talks about the technical and vocational education and training. It's education and training which produces knowledge and skills for employment. And UNESCO defined it or uh, refers to it as aspect of the education process involving, in addition to general education, the study of technologies and related science and the acquisition of practical skills, attitudes, understanding, and knowledge uh, related to occupants in various sectors of the economic and social life. Now, 
from the above two uh, claimed definitions, TVET in Nigeria aims to assist the federal and state um, education authorities in their effort to revitalize, reform, and expand the provision of skills, vocation, science, and technology to meet the nation's present and future socioeconomic needs. This is TFELT, April 2019. And it uses formal, non formal, and informal learning. It is recognized to be a crucial vehicle for social equity, inclusion, and sustainable development. I have is a sketch here that really shows you know, the TVET in Nigeria for various skill sets. If you look at the left hand side you know, of the graph, it looks at it as formal learning, non formal learning, and informal learning. And to the right, it shows the aim that is to assist both the federal, state education, and all authorities in their efforts to revitalize, to reform, and expand the provision of skill, vocations, science, and technologies to meet the nation's present and future social economy. See, so that is just a graphical expression, you know, of it. We have a lot of other terminologies, which because of time, I will just go through. But in my paper and the slides, you have them. The Unified TFET Program Registration and Accreditation System, which is called Autopras. Its purpose is to its quality assured process of implementing the TFET to ensure compliance of the training institutions with today's standards. Then when we talk of the technical and vocational skill development, that's TVSD. The term technical and vocational skill development refer to the acquisition of knowledge, as we have said before. So I want us to look at the difference between you know, the technical and the vocational schools. I have some pictures you know, that shows the difference between the technical school and you know, the vocational school, which represents what it stands for. And according to the US Department of Education, technical school teach the theory and science behind occupation, while vocational schools take a more hand-on approach to teaching those needed to the job successfully. Now, that is where we have the university education of I just said that as an example. We have the Polytechnic, you know, which provides, you know, the technological uh, expertise, you know, to the profession of architecture, and the university, you know, teaches, you know, the theory and the education, you know, to the profession. Now, the question lies, especially in Nigeria, unlike in Ghana, as um, was said, you know, by uh, the speaker, the first speaker. Where does University of Technology Education in Nigeria lie? Because according to what you know, we have read, we have you know the um, federal or state or I mean you know private or, you know colleges of technology or polytechnics, and the award ND and HND, and to each of the professions we know you know, what they contribute to. But in Nigeria, we have series of University of Technology Education. So where does it lie? That is a question that I want us to trash during this conference. Now, I want us to go to the importance of technical and vocational education, TVET. Now, the technical and um, vocational education and training, which is TVET, is particularly important for promoting economic development, expanding employment size, and improving quality of employment. Now, let's look at uh, the vocational skill. The vocational skill are practical or force and skills that help a person master a trade or a job. This skill may be 
trained on the job or at vocational school. A vocational school provides technical education to prepare people for work in a trade, craft, or profession. These are the importance of the vocational skill education. Now, I have for a graph, you know, that shows, you know, the vocational skills. We have a lot of them surrounding, you know, the, the graph. Now, let's move, you know, to vocational skill education. It helps people in the better performance of their job as they acquire a great learning experience. Working professionals get a chance to own their skill while making money, you know, uh, simultaneously. Now, that is vocational school education. I want us to look at technical school and skills. Now, technical skill are the ability and knowledge needed to perform specific tasks. They are practically and often relate to mechanical information technology, mathematical scientific tasks. Some examples include knowledge of programming languages, design programs, mechanical equipments, or tools. Now, what is the importance of technical skill education? I have for, you know, we, we have defined the two. That is the technical skill and vocational skill education. Now, let us look at, um, you know, compare the two. The technical skill education, as it is shown on the graph that I have, provide practical knowledge of technologies and, skill, and skills, which is technical education. While, you know, the uh, vocational uh, skill education uh, promotes independent and self-learning. Now, I want to also move to the challenges of TVET in Nigeria. Now, the study reveals the following factors as challenges of achieving quality TVET programs. The problems range from the limited number of technical institutions available in the country. And if you look at, uh, for example, the construction industry, you find out you know, that uh, this uh, set of people that affect our construction industry, I just take that as an example, we get that one you know, from neighboring countries you know, in, um, in West Africa, whereas we don't have enough you know, to produce. And I have uh, some uh, factors you know, as challenges to achieving this quality. I have about eight of them that I listed. Lack of adequate facilities and material for training students, inadequate technical teachers or facilitators, limited number of training institutions for technical teachers, difficulty in career um, progression to the negative public perception, then the public perception you know, about TVET. Then the curriculum issue that has little or no relationship with workplace and social needs. And that is why when you say you have ND or HND, you now correct, I mean, uh, compare it, you know, to having, you know, bachelor, you know, in science or bachelor in the university system. They don't have the same basis as we have seen. Poor funding and embezzlement of funds meant for educational development purposes. We all know this because we uh, experience it. And last and not the least, the de development, recruitment, and retention of quality teachers. Now, from here, I have, you know, the, uh, on graphics, I put them, you know, graphics, challenges of TVET in Nigeria. You can see that, you know, on the, um, on the slide. Now, we move from here to economic transformation for global competitiveness, because that is what the theme, you know, focused attention in. And I said, Nigeria, the giant of Africa, in quotes, the most populated country in Africa, is rated as a consumer nation, a consumer nation, and a nation that imports 90% of what it consumes. 
the main goal of the technical and vocational and educational and training it event should provide a significant and important role in implementing and promoting sustainable development towards economic transformation for global competitiveness in Nigeria. For this set goal to be achieved, the report of this conference must offer solutions to the sustainable technical and vocational training towards economic transformation you know, for global competitiveness in Nigeria under the following headings. And I have about five of them. One, best practice and models for supporting sustainable, uh, sustainable technical and vocational training. Two, the role of the government, private sector enterprises, or technical and vocational training schools. Three, improving technical and vocational training in the current rapidly changing world. The fourth one is financing technical and vocational training. And last and not the least, having policy on conducive environment for technical and vocational training in governance and management. These are very important five you know, factors that I want you know, this conference you know, to, I mean, to focus on, which affects the global for us to now say that, yes, we can compete globally, then these five you know, should be addressed. Now, my paper now goes into a case study. The case study is uh, a PAD, one of my PADs, you know, candidates at University of Lagos, 1997. It's on research work on the impact of some selected variables on practical skill acquisition by technical college students in Lagos State, Nigeria. Um, uh, the, the case study is well analyzed in my paper. I wouldn't like to waste much time on that because it is right there. I want to go you know, straight away you know, to the uh, last slide on that case study, which is the conclusive aspect. And I said, based on the both main findings, it was concluded that since all the independent variables have positive relationship amongst themselves and also gently made various levels of contributions to practical skill acquisition, these outcomes should guide the planning, the design, the implementation, I mean implementation and evaluation you know, of the practical skill education in our technical institutions in Nigeria especially during and post-COVID-19 um, pandemic eras. Now, let me now go you know, to my recommendations. And I want to sp spend some time you know, in this because the recommendations are for the theme for the conference as the way forward you know, in achieving. And for the conference, I want us to make, I mean, have these suggestions and really, you know, um, um, treat it very well. It's the following are some suggestions that at the end of this conference, we should have thoroughly, we should have thoroughly come up with more elaborate recommendations on the way forward in helping to solving the challenges on the theme of this conference. And I have seven of them itemized. And I want to just look at it critically, one by one. And in our different groups during this conference, I want us to elaborate and put practical ways of you know, um, bringing this recommendation into fusion. The first one is technical institutions and college, colleges should be well equipped, funded, and start with qualified technical um, instructors. On this note, I want to you know, refer to um, the provost and all the members of staff of this particular, I mean, um, federal invest, I mean, uh, federal um, 
uh, College of Technica, you know, that is situation uh, situated in, in Ilaro, for what they achieved, especially during this conflict term, 19, you know, Palava. We know, you know, that uh, they achieved something, you know, that when I got it from, you know, the internet, I shared it with the director and the head of the department. And the director asked me, where did they get, you know, that um, information? And I said, you think, you know, that uh, we don't follow some of you, all right? The production of the mechanical incubators, you know, for the health sector, using locally, you know, in fact, not less than 80%, you know, um, facilities that are, that they used to produce this. This is crudo, you know, to the director and the entire members of Federal Polytechnic um, Ilaro. So I want to give you a crudo, you know, on that. Now, so what we are saying is that our technical institutions and colleges should be well equipped, well funded, and well staffed with qualified technical instruction. Two, the much emphasis on paper qualification without skill should not be encouraged or should be highly reduced. This is very, very important. Unlike a trained, it is not your paper qualification. It is what you can produce. I think we need to change from this attitude. God will help us. The third one, technical lecturers or instructors should be well paid as to attract qualified personnel you know, to the profession. And you know, brain drain, we have it, you know, in our country. We go to other countries, especially the developed countries, and better their own performance there. Because the way we treat our lecturers and our instructors in Nigeria is not only in technical institutions, it's all over our tertiary institutions. This, you know, should be looked into. Then the, uh, the fourth one, staff training for technical lecturers and instructors should be given special attention because, you know, that will enhance their morale and, you know, um, make them, you know, to be more aware of the latest developments. Then the fourth, I mean, fifth one is technical certificates, both local and foreign should be regarded as recognized for both admissions and employment as long as they are inter, I mean, they, they serve internal standards. This is very, very important because, you know, when you say, you know, I remember in the uh, late 60s when I finished, you know, my school start and um, I was given uh, uh, admission to read electrical engineering at the then Technical college, it was the students will be technical college, now polytechnic. And I look at myself, how can I go to technical school? You know, when that is, uh, you know, University of Ibadan, University of um, Ife, you know, that kind of thing. That attitude should change. I didn't mean that I was, I mean, I went to that place earlier before I went, you know, to the university. You can see, you know, that maybe I should have achieve the greater height in electrical engineering. But because of our attitude, you know, the special attention should be given, you know, to the standard. Once it meets the standard, just like what we have in Ilaru, then let us encourage and recognize, you know, the certificates that come out of it. Then the sixth one is that should be a clear evidence from governance. I mean, governments indicating that Technical technology, I mean, technical technology certificates are not inferior to other certificates. certificates. This, I think, we should also look into in this conference and come up with a very good, uh, robust, you know, recommendations to the government. And the last and not the least, there is a need for future I mean, for further align of TVET graduates, I mean, graduate health course, 
to the industry's demand for higher skill level. Currently, there is a mismatch between the skill required in industry and the skill of graduates of our tertiary institutions to the labor market. We should look deeply you know, into this. The Victoria you know, shows you know, that um, these are representation of um, the people that um, gather together at this second uh, international conference you know, that um, Laru is bringing us together you know, to come up with uh, very good recommendations. In conclusion, the poor level of technical, I mean, technological development of Nigeria is too much comparing to advanced nations you know, of the world. Nigeria especially is regarded as a consumer nation whose citizens are not employable during to, I mean, to lack of skills. I remember some of my products when, you know, they, 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 they get their mouth and they want to see to PhD overseas. They will and say, you know, that they have to do this until when they test, you know, their ability. Then they know, you know, that. Uh, but with all these incessant uh, strikes and all that, it lowers the standard of our tertiary institutions. So the government, you know, should look into it and be serious, you know, in um, this area. The negative effects of this negligence of technical education, especially, is reflecting on our economy. Presently, hunger, unemployment, kidnapping, armed robbery, and all other forms of social vices, you know, as squarely visited our nation. Thousands of nations youths have run to foreign lands for what? For greener pasture. The technical and to round up the technical and vocational education and training, TVET, contribution, uh, contribution to economic transformation for global competitiveness and sustainable development must play an important role on implementing and promoting sustainable development. TVET institutions are major suppliers of workforce who will be in the forefront in dealing directly with our sustainable issues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. It was a brilliant presentation, a well thought out and well delivered presentation. We appreciate it. it we really, really, really love the presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, at this point, we want to announce questions from conference participants. Uh, we can do it in two forms. If you raise your hand electronically, and then we uh, recognize you, and then I'll unmute you and ask you to unmute yourself so as to uh, speak to the uh, conferees. Secondly, you could still send your questions via the chat loop, via the chat handle, where I would uh, identify them and then uh, read it to uh, the specific uh, speaker you have uh, addressed them to. Uh, we have some already, as we expect that uh, some people will start raising up their hand in the interim. Let me quickly go to some of the questions that uh, we have received via chat and that uh, focus uh, it to the uh, person that is to answer them, as we expect others to raise up their hand electronically. We have a question for uh, Professor Mamne Man Nkrumah. Uh, the question is from Mr. Lassisi, one of the dean of this great institution, dean of uh, School of Environmental Studies. Is Professor on? Uh, he wants to know uh, the issues of uh, infrastructure deficits in Africa, which is uh, uh, militating against economic uh, progression and in fact causing economic regression. Uh, and uh, how can Tibet come to the rescue? Uh, again, 
Another question from uh, Adade Johnson. Adade and uh, Johnson Lutu. Uh, the, the, their question is similar. Uh, Adade is from Ghana. He wants to ask, when will we receive the presentation of uh, uh, the presentation via mails? And I can confirm to you that uh, the presentation of Professor Nkrumah and other presenters will be sent to you today. Uh, Dr. G.A. Ogufemi asked a series of questions. And um, the first is that, how can TIVET be developed to be able to achieve one's potentials? How can we uh, develop ourselves to be able to, how can we develop TIVET in a manner that one potentials can be achieved? I can also observe from another of his question is that uh, Research Africa do not invest enough money in research. How can TVET achieve this? That is investing more in research in Africa. Uh, Dr. Ogufemi also observed that Ghana and Nigeria have the best cocoa in West Africa, but oppressed by Europeans. How can TVET stop this? Our own Dr. Akinde, Dean of School of Management Studies, this great institution, wants to ask Professor Nkrumah that uh, upon observing various problems facing Tibet, he wants to know what strategies will, should be recommended to take Africa out of these conundrums. He identified challenges like uh, TVET funding, uh, poor electricity, and uh, as well as other poor infrastructure. So his, his question is targeted at what strategies will we recommend to take Africa to out of these challenges? He also want us to ask, how will governments of Africa advance their level of contribution to the funding of TVET, particularly in areas of research and grants? This question is, how do and how should governments increase access to grants for funding of TVET? Another scholar, an erudite one, Mr. Joshua Momi, the Dean of uh, Student Affairs, directed his questions also to Professor Nkrumah. How do we conduct a link between governance in terms of leadership and the reflection of these key benefits? of TVET in Nigeria and Africa at large. The emphasis of that question is that they observed the policy somersaults, which are leading to misgovernance. And how do we address this? How do we address the leadership problem in order to make TVET better in Africa? All right. We have uh, some hands up. Uh, we can recognize Dr. Wale Ajayi. You are recognized, sir. Wale Ajayi, can you ask a question? Thank you very much. Good morning, all. I hope um, my greeting on the time of day is appropriate. It's afternoon now. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I actually yes. thought uh, it wouldn't come to my contribution, so I sent in a contribution uh, via chat. And I am looking at leveraging on the views of uh, Professor Mame on the positive of exchange programs. And I'm asking if the FBI could start to develop a framework 
for exchange programs on technological issues, have, thinking of virtual and physical exchange programs and developing that framework uh, within the space in Nigeria. And I'm sure if we do it like we always do our proposals, uh, there's going to be a hit to it and we're going to be able to have a conference of individuals from all over Africa uh, doing exchanges in virtual ways and non-virtual ways and making sure we put our usual excellence to it, leading uh, with uh, uh, a detailed idea and uh, having it done the way it should be done. I think it can still be done. And the COVID situation now gives us a, a leverage to do it, not so cheaply, but at least virtually, to start it off virtually. Thank you. That's my suggestion, not quite a question. Thank you for the con Thank you very much. It's a, it's a contribution. Uh, the person I'm seeing in front of this screen should stop sharing this picture. Stop sharing your picture. Uh, stop sharing your picture. Thank you, sir, Dr. Adwala Jai. We appreciate that contribution. Your contribution is always uh, uh, invaluable, as I want to say. Uh, this is noted. You have asked that uh, uh, we should consider physical or virtual exchange programs uh, in looking at Africa and uh, diaspora. As much as possible, we we'll, would uh, work on that. And uh, the directors of Linkage and Affiliation is here listening to us. I'm sure it's going to come up with something uh, that you are known for in FBI. Thank you. Aziz, that's your name. Stop sharing your, your screen. Thank you. Thank you. Has done that. Let us. Uh, let's. Is anybody raising up their hand there? Okay, Professor. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, salutations for uh, people, the presenters. We appreciate them. We really appreciate them. Yes, yes. I'm. I'm waiting for the professor. I'm waiting for the professor. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see if you have other questions for our other presenters. The presenters will be omitted. So we could start asking some questions. I have another another comment from Adade he wants to know if it is true that Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, as well as Nigeria, produces the best cocoa in Ghana. It produces the best cocoa. He wants to know that. And uh, can TVET discussions be of help? on how to improve this development. That could be addressed by Dr. Kadri. Thank you, Dr. Baku. Yes, sir. Uh, for the job well done. Thank you, sir. The question is how can TFET so case all products FPI made during COVID-19. Okay. How can TVET showcase 
All products, first of all, FDI made showcase all products. yes, FDI made. Okay. FDI made during COVID 19. COVID 19. Thank you, sir. Yes, that was Whatever. the question. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I've also, I've also, uh, clearly, sir. Can you also, hear me, Dr. Mako? Question directed to you, sir. Okay. I heard you clearly, and I've taken your question. But uh, ever, I have a question, we have a question for you. There's okay. a question directed to you. That uh, how could we okay. employ TVET to explore uh, the potentials of agriculture in Nigeria, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, particularly in Kuku. Now let me answer the first uh, question. TFET ordinarily is transferring trans theoretical philosophies. Can you hear me, Dr. Bako? Another participant? Clearly, clearly. TFET ordinarily is transferring theoretical philosophies into, prat into practicability within the ultimate intention to solving society problems. <laughs> These practicals are encouraged for commercialization. Now, to meet this condition, it behoves our government either Nigeria government, Ghana, any African country, to provide an enabling environment for TFED principle to flourish. With that enabling environment, participants, no matter the idea you have, no matter the principle behind your technology, It will not flourish. But when there is an environment, it's when the environment is conducive for the researcher to carry out the good works, we will see now that the T30 principle will flourish. There is need to encourage researchers Thank you. by providing funding and all other facilities required for maximum okay. operationality, operationalization of TFET. We have talked about Thank internet. You. In this country, 65% of Nigeria do not have access to internet. We are lucky today that we have all interrupted power supply at my own end. Okay. But we cannot talk of others, other places, even within the within this country, there is need for other facilities to be in place. If you are in the office, you should be able to count, carry out research or interrupted. Parts of that should be given to you. In addition, as I have said in my paper, as I have said in my paper, TFET curriculum should not be based on the foreign ideas should be locally yes. based, based on the available okay. in the laboratory. And Professor Ali has made okay. a great measure of one thing the other time. Professor Ali has emphasized that the instructors and technology should be given, should be placed, should be given salary commensurate with their work. I want to allow Dr. Kadri, thank you thing. so much. <laughs> thank you so much. We appreciate your answer. Very, very detailed. Very, very detailed. I mean, to call on Professor Andy to address the second question. The question is from uh, Olakpeju Olasukomi, Dr. Olakpeju Olasukomi. He asks that what should we be doing to dimensioning TVET to the need to the new order and ensuring compliance with the technical expectations of the future of work. What should we be doing 
to dimensioning TVET to the new order and ensuring compliance with the technical expectations of the future of work. Is that for me? Yes, sir, Professor Olani Okidele. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. I just want to add the few to the former um, question, you know, concerning, you know, the importation of cocoa. It's not it only cocoa. Almost all are agri uh, agricultural products. We should not rely on exporting the raw materials outside. Our TVET should be directed towards when we have good environment, you know, that uh, will help us to produce and improve in the final, you know, um, production, you know, of our raw materials. And in most cases, yes, we may have very good quality raw materials like cocoa, yam, and all that. By the time we um, export them and it gets to, you know, the other end, most of them are already damaged. Why can't we go looking in, inwards and not send raw agricultural products, but fine tune it? We have a lot of um, industries, you know that, but because of the environment, just like um, the former speaker said, the environment must be conducive, you know, to bring it into. Now, coming to uh, the question raised by Dr. Olaguju, 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 yes, I, I, I still want to base, you know, the answer on these are the challenges that we have, you know, that I believe defects, if properly, and that is what we are saying, if adequate facilities and materials for training students and training, you know, the trainers, are provided. I know that heaven is, you know, it's not the limit. It's the start, you know, towards getting, you know, the solution to it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. We have uh, a couple of questions for Professor Ukruma. And uh, the questions are, I'll start with the question of uh, Dr. Kaduri. And his question is, uh, very germane, is asking, how can CVET showcase the products of the Federal Protective Kilaro made during the COVID-19 lockdown? Okay, thank you. Uh, there, there, have been, I wish you cases. there have been a number of other questions, but let me address this one first. I think yes. in the presentation, it was made clear that the way to go these days is the online approach. Uh, see, uh, internet is without any boundary. Apart from works that we have done, we ourselves can project ourselves on just a minute. Let me. Okay. What we can do is that we need to exhibit these things on the internet, on our website, various websites, so that others can see and know what is happening. So that is the first one. I have other um, questions here. Uh, once somebody asks the question, how can we harness our TVET potential? Because we know that when somebody wants to do TVET, people always discourage the person. Uh, when people want to be medical doctors and lawyers, you, you want to go and do TV, what do you mean? <laughs> and so right from the basic school level, we need to do guidance and counseling and then do a bit of mentoring, bring people. We have a uh, witted year, then my Nigerian sisters know. We have females who are engineers, we have females who are into TVs. We send them there and they talk to them. Look, I'm a woman, I'm an engineer. Look, I have this. So, right from the beginning, they get this, and some of them uh, pick up. And then, those the teachers also need to be helped to talk to parents because there have been people who have followed their passion even when they have become doctors. 
they pursue a degree, but they still, I have a friend who is into fashion now, but she did science. Because passion was her, 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 fashion was her passion, but the parents will not allow. So when she grew up, she stopped the, what the father wanted her to pursue, and it's now so it. And it's a great stress. So we need to do a lot of counseling, career guidance, to help these ones, one. And even as a parent ourselves, we are into TV, but sometimes when our children want to do that, we stop them. So we should start the example from ourselves. We have nieces, we have uh, nephews, we have whoever who wants to enter into TV. Let's encourage the person. And that is how we develop. Um, another question was on research. Governments don't want to put money into research. And because of that, uh, TVET is not well researched. We all know the problems of Africa. No money. But fortunately, there are grants elsewhere. If we develop our skills well, we will be able to fund some, we can be able to assess some of these funds. And uh, when we, we were in training college, for example, as a teacher, we were taught improvisation. Instead of always relying on raw materials from elsewhere, let us look within. We can always play some of these materials in our research. And I think when we do that, it will help us. I don't know whether I've gone over time. There are more questions here, but if I'm not allowed, I will drop. Or if you want me to continue. Continue. We have other questions. I think, uh, let me read it to you. Um, you have a question that uh, talks about uh, um, strategies. What strategies will we recommend to take Africa out of this challenge, this of uh, poor electricity as it affects, and other infrastructure as it affects civet? Another one that I will want you to uh, look at in the same vein has to do with uh, uh, leadership. What should our leadership be doing? That question is from Momomi. He's talking about uh, uh, policies and, as how, and how these politics are assaults. So what do you expect from leadership of uh, African countries in, in respect to Tibet? Uh, I think that many of the problems of Africa stems from leadership. As, we sh we, as I showed in the beginning of uh, Africa, is very rich, but what is happening? Before somebody even comes to power, somebody elsewhere promises him power or support. So he will use our natural resources as security for arms or whatever. And then once the person comes to power, whoever helped him now have access to whatever resources the country has. And they would benefit from it, whilst the local people who are supposed to benefit from these things, do not even become aware of the existence of those money. So leadership is a main problem, but I always believe in what we can do at our level. Some of the issues about poverty uh, or leadership in our various, let us focus on the small, small things we can do in our community. If, like I showed you the picture, if you go and you see the women are preparing oil and they are in the pit, the government doesn't have money to come in, but as CVET institutions, can we come together and develop a, mach a small machine for our people so that they can use that to better their lives? I think that is good leadership on our part. I remember one professor came to visit our university and she went where she slept. There was a, a, a restaurant where they bake bread and the women were in the smoke and all the heat. So she looked and she saw, and she told me, please, can you talk to the mechanical engineering department? Perhaps they could just do some small chimney for them so that the smoke will go up. So on our own way, let us show leadership. If the government is not interested and it's not bringing money, can we use our technology to solve some of these small, small, small problems so that we move forward? Because I think the problem of leadership goes beyond, <laughs> at the top, goes beyond TV. There's very little we can do. For people come into power by vote, and once people are voted, there's nothing you can do. But I want to look at leadership at our level, our small, small levels. 
first look at what we can do to help and use the knowledge that we have to help them. Then the issue of electricity. Uh, Africa, we just rely on uh, electricity from water. But there are other sources of energy, like solar. Sun is abundant. What are we doing about solar energy? As CVS institution, is it possible to come up with alternative sources of energy apart from electricity? I have been to Nigeria. I've seen generators everywhere. Can we look at alternative <laughs> arrangements of getting energy? For example, from sun, yeah. the wind, or from the sea, as in things, um, look, search for these other alternatives instead of uh, relying on. You see, our main problem is with is is with our mind because we think that anything that is not coming from the west is not good. You do anything, and if the thing is from, from Africa, you look at it's Nigeria. Oh, it's not good. Oh, it's from uh, uh, oh Ghana. Oh, this is uh, made in Ghana. Let us look at what we can do here. And I think if we do that, we can progress. Thank you. Thank you. I think you have made uh, done justice to the questions. And there's a question for Professor uh, O'Kinele. Uh, question, please, I want you, it's, it's, it's too forwarded. Um, it's from Dr. Akinde. said, paper qualification in Nigeria and Africa in general is worrisome. How do you think this can be reduced or eliminated? The second question, what is your assessment of technical institutions in Nigeria? Thank you so much. Um, the first, that's um, from Dr. Akinde. The first question, yep. that is um, paper qualification. I think I said it in my paper, uh, and I will speak from my own experience. I, I uh, am a trained teacher, just like I'm a professor from Ghana. I'm a grade two NCE and got my mm -hmm. first degree in education in mathematics before I went to start architecture at all outside. So I have the flair of, of you know, both you know, the imperial system of, of education and the real core system of education. So I, I can say, you know, that, um, like I said in my paper, you know, that um, in Nigeria, which we got, you know, from imperial system of education, we rely more on paper qualification. Whereas in other developed countries, especially United States or Russia and all that, they rely on what you can do. For example, you know, um, and my father used to say, he's uh, late now since 1995, he used to say, you know, that um, I would say it in Yoruba, then translate it. He shall walk, pay, do, he shall live here alone. What does that mean? He started inducing in me that I should not, whatever education that I have, I should not rely on salary alone. I should rely on what I can use my hand to produce. And that's a challenge to TVEL. Our professor said something, you know, that counseling and mentoring is very important, especially with our younger ones. Everybody wants white collar job. No, let us divert our attention to what TVEL produce. That is, you know, it shall work. That is, you know, a skill that you can produce. In the United States, I want to tell you, you know, that any time the economy goes down, they will put more money into construction industry because, you know, that is what will revive, you know, the economy. And where I studied, you know, when I, uh, my, my profile was um, being read, there is never any time, although they knew that I went to the Catholic University, but there is never any time that they ask for my pali, my certificate. It is what I did in the previous, you know, organization, you know, that they rely on in giving me, you know, better job. So we should, in, in all its spaces, not only in Nigeria, in Africa, to disregard, you know, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have 
certificate. Our certificate, you know, should be skilled oriented. And in reality, if you even look at university system, you see that, uh, you know, that is um, this provision, you know, of um, six months internship is a way, say words, is a way by which, you know, we can bring in skill even into theoretical, you know, uh, education that we have in universities. But TVEX, to me, is direct, and I can say in architecture, you know, that uh, I have employed so many people, you know, that are that have, you know, that are graduated, you know, in an architecture and graduates, you know, of from um, polytechnics, the HND. Most of them are better, you know, than um, the graduates, you know, in our university. So we should rely on that. Tivet, to me, you know, and I've been involved in curriculum, you know, writings and all that. So we should put more emphasis, just like um, the challenges that I identified and the way forward, you know, that I said. If you look at, uh, I, I don't want to waste, you know, too much on that. I have prepared some way forward on how we can enhance the TIFED, the concept of TIFED, you know, as um, it is. Then the second one is, uh, uh, sorry. And can you repeat the second question, sir? From Dr. Akinde. Okay, the second half I have question. You can barely hear you, sir. Uh, hello, I want you to repeat the second question from Dr. Akinde. Apart from okay, the second question. question. Yes. The second question. Yes. Uh, the assessment of uh, uh, technical education in Nigeria. The assess the assessment of technological institutions in Nigeria. Now, the assessment. What should be the assessment? Is that the question? Or if I can get it right? Because the assessment must not what be based is your assessment. <laughs> your assessment of My technological assessment. institutions in Nigeria. Oh, fantastic. I've already said it in the example that I gave. Coincidentally, I, oh, I, I am um, an employer, you know, in architecture, in, you know, in the practical aspect. Yeah, yeah. And I said it, you know, that um, the you. products of um, our, the MD and HND, some of them are much better, you know, in producing, you know, in the construction industry. So we should enhance that. So my own personal you know, is that we should enhance more. Because right now, if you go into construction industry, we rely more on people, the artisans, you know, from neighboring countries, rather from, I mean, from Nigeria here. Because most of our technical institutions are not well, you know, um, equipped, not well financed. So we don't have much of them. So we should go into that and enhance it because that will enhance our economy. That's my 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 candid advice to that. Sir. Thank you very very much, Professor. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, uh, response. And uh, I, I also extend these thanks to all the three presenters and their ability to have uh, sufficiently answered our questions. Thank you. After a very, very brilliant presentation, you are also able to answer our questions. We would uh, put a pause to the questions at this point, though the platform is still open at least for the next 15 minutes or thereabout, where we can still have people sending their written questions. And I assure them that uh, the presenters will uh, react via the chat. Group. I want to quickly appreciate, and I missed uh, Dr. Ufemi. And Jaol uh, Fal. Jaol Fal. She's from Gambia. She has joined us from Gambia. She's a friend I met. I met Kappa, 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 some years, years back. back. We, we appreciate, appreciate you being around. And all other persons that have joined from all other parts of the world and uh, Africa specifically. Quickly, I want to move to the next agenda. It has to do with both of tanks. The vote of tanks uh, will be done by our own. Doctor, Mr. C. B. Time for the vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. 
It is a great honor for me this afternoon to give the vote of thanks at the second international conference opening ceremony. On behalf of the rector, architect Olushegu Olariwaju Aluko, PhD, the management team, the organizing committee, staff and students of number one polytechnic in Nigeria, the Federal Polytechnic in Laru. With deep sense of appreciation, I thank the keynote speaker, Professor Mrs. Mame Afua Unkruma, the lead paper presenters, engineer Dr. Kamoru Oluwato Inkadri, and Professor Olani Samuel Okedele for accepting to share their knowledge and wealth of experience with us at this second biennial conference of the Polytechnic. We appreciate all participants from within and outside Nigeria for your interest as demonstrated in the high number of papers submitted for sharing and discussion. Also, we thank all members of staff of this great institution for your unalloyed support towards the growth and development of the institution, particularly for ensuring an enabling academic environment. On behalf of the organizing committee, I appreciate the chairman, engineer O.A. Oshore, and all committee members for their diligence and dedication, and also all the various subcommittee for your support for the hosting of this uh, conference. Finally, I wish all our participants fruitful presentations at the various technical sessions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for, it has been a very wonderful day. Uh, fruitful deliberations we uh, expected, fruitful deliberations we got. We look forward to a uh, continuation of these fruitful deliberations at the plenary sessions. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's good to, to be here and we look forward to uh, calling you back in two years time for yet another conference. From this end, we say thank you and God bless you.
Thank you.